So we're going to be playing around with stitching photos together in this one. Now, I mentioned this in a previous video when you create materials or textures. If you have a cheap camera or a cell phone or whatever, you can use that to take multiple photos of the same area. So you can increase the resolution and can also use it to kind of blend between them to make sure you get the sharpest image possible. Again, be quite useful. And basically, that's stitching images together is what we're doing. Affinity Photo likes to call it panoramas. And so we're going to use that feature. Now, it's already went outside. And my cell phone in particular, what ends up happening is that, uh, first of all, it has a couple issues. Um, sometimes it's blurry for no reason in certain areas. I haven't figured that one out yet, um, even if the lens is clean. But here's the thing. As you zoom further and further in, it gets this weird compression thing going on. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. I don't know what, what they have going on underneath the hood when it comes to um, optimizing those. But anyways, I'm not a fan of that. So generally speaking, if you you take multiple photos and you, you have enough space covered in those photographs and you keep them all so that you can identify like different little features as you're taking the, uh, the series of photos, you can start stitching them together. And then you can down sample this later on and you won't have to worry about things like that as much. So what we're going to do, of course, is go to Affinity Photo and we're going to click File New. And we're going to do New from Panorama. Okay. And so if I add those images in, what you'll see happen here is I didn't actually move around quite a lot. It's kind of all in the same area. And this is going to work well for us in, in this demo here. But we're going to click Stitch Panorama. It's going to go ahead and start that number there so we can get like a preview going and see how these images are all working together at a glance. Okay. It's not really much to look at here. You can see I didn't go much left or right or up or down. It kind of took a couple of different photos in the same area. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And so it's going to do its little rendering section here for a second. And we can take these different layers of images and we can blend between them. Okay. And it's going there. Done. All right. So we're going to uh, pull mouse wheel in, I guess, to zoom in. You can see like this bottom right corner is fairly blurry. Okay. And we see over here, it's a little bit sharper, but once again, it still does a little Voronoi looking, um, whatever thing it does there. So we get the idea. All right, now here we go. So we want to use this little brush. If we um, click around, we can actually select the different images. You see how that works out? So whichever ones are looking a little bit sharper, we can go ahead and just start using this brush to work this area. Now you're not worrying about feathering things together. You don't need a soft brush or textured brush or anything like that because it's going to try to interpolate everything, I think. Um, but we can select the sharper areas. All right, and then when we switch to a different image, like say maybe this one that's hiding underneath here, we can start working this one as well. Now it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here, but if we zoom in a little bit, we can see it's a little bit sharper with this image right here. And I only need this like bottom corner almost. Because I don't have another image over in this area, so that's going to remain blurry. And this one isn't much, much sharper anyways, but uh, we can certainly do this and then we can click render and it will process it real quick and we'll see what we get out of this. A little blurry right there. Oh, it fixed it. Nice. Yeah. So you want to try to get rid of as much blurry stuff as you can, generally speaking. If you hold control, you can kind of click through these as well. Actually, I don't even know if you need it. Yeah, you don't even need to hold control. It was just something I was doing, I guess. But anyways. Let's render it again real quick. I want to see if the, what we have here. Can I use this in this area? The eraser I don't find to be all that useful. But this certainly does work. Okay, that's way too blurry then. If you wanted to use the eraser there, you probably could. I'm going to go right up to that line. You don't usually want to leave it right there, but we're going to try to get as much usable information out of this as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to click render. So if we have many, many more photos, uh, we would get an extremely large image by the end of this. You can already see the size here is 13,660 by uh, 12,310. That's all the way to these borders. Uh, we're not going to obviously use that much. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, click apply now. It'll go ahead and re-render it, or it should anyways. We can go ahead and crop this. I'm going to set the crop to, um, you can use whatever you want. You can use a custom ratio. It doesn't really matter. 
or you could set it to a square ratio then uh, custom ratio there right copy paste done that's a square ratio make them the same values scale it place it where you need it and i don't want to get too carried away here i want just the sharpest areas could even possibly rotate this and try to take that top corner which we didn't really look at too much but so just maximizing what we get here basically out of the out of these images and overall not too bad so uh, panorama is what size is this now 7914 by okay so much better than i would have got with just one single image basically and we can kind of pick and choose we'll still unfortunately have this little issue with this uh, weird effect here because i didn't use a wide enough area perhaps or i didn't move in far enough and take enough multiple photos uh, but when you resize documents i wouldn't probably use this at this size uh, but for like a mobile game or something 1024 pretty pretty big reduction there you can also try changing the resample from bilinear to nearest neighbor or any kind of other blend methods here if you want it to say a little bit sharper but you can see that doesn't even matter anymore like you can barely see that effect it doesn't so at a 1024 resolution not a huge deal when you have little issues like that and so we can always take this into a program like substance bitmap to material we might save this out and go ahead and save a PNG to the desktop here. And I think I got two that I already did. So we'll do a new one that's it's actually asphalt that's broken up in with a bunch of sand. Unfortunately, it's not really good for bitmap to material. You'll see here why. It's better to do this one in Substance Designer. You need a little bit more control on it. Uh, but overall, it looks pretty good, especially if you turn the environment background on. You'll kind of get a better understanding of how this thing looks with the sun in the background there. But, oh, you know what? Let's pull that back out. And so Bitmap to Material, of course, is an older program that is no longer for sale. It's replaced by what I thought was Substance Alchemist, but I guess they changed it to Substance Sampler or something like that. Anyways, I don't, I don't follow that too much. So um, high frequency, we can tweak that if we needed to. Low frequency. When we bring that out, I don't know if I even mentioned it while I was doing it. Get a hold of it again. You can change the scale with parallax occlusion by default in this program. Of course, this program is not for sale. So you can also use other programs like Materialize, but you got to make this a seamless texture before you use uh, Materialize. It's a free program where you can do very similar things to this, but it's a little different. And so. Ultimately, this was a 1024. Let's go back to its native resolution. I find that between 1024 and 4K, there isn't a, a huge, huge improvement in the texture quality, at least not on a 1080p screen, maybe on 4K or 8K or something there is. But overall, um, these little asphalt pieces are digging in as opposed to being lifted out. And so that's inaccurate. You would need to adjust those individual sections and start to pull them out in Substance Designer. That's why I said this isn't very good for um, for this uh, program over here. But you, you still get the idea of what this potentially could be if you were running through a, a program like this. It's really not too bad at all. And so we can definitely tweak the values here. And so it would make a great preview material at this point. But if we continue working it, uh, doing better sample, like when we go out and take photos, take more photos a little bit closer perhaps and um, stitch them to get together to create this in higher resolution where there's no blurring and um, we can downsample it quite a bit we would end up with a pretty stellar result here that um, you just simply are not i'm not going to say you won't find that on asset stores obviously you have like quixel where they do their own thing and then you have other you know other guys take photos all the time with uh, really good cameras as well so you can find them on material sites but it's nice to be able to create your own when you're out and about. And you're just like, man, that's really cool. I wish I had that. And now you can actually create it. Uh, it's not really a big, big deal uh, to do that, right? So if we had a little bit higher resolution, it would be great. You don't need super amazing cameras necessarily, just a little bit more time and effort. And so that's why I wanted to make this video about stitching and talk about it real quick, just to give you an idea of what is possible at least, right? So if you ever find yourself in that predicament, 
where you need more resolution, you need better quality out of your cell phone or whatever, this is what you do, okay? Just stitch them together. It's very simple. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel, all that fun stuff. And I'll check you out in the next one, all right? Take care.